Hey friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and today I'm going to show you how I darn a cotton sheet. Now these are a weird repair. Now if this was a top sheet, I would just patch this because it's not that big a deal, but it's a bottom sheet. And I'm telling you, and I've got it on the wrong side facing because there's what the pattern looks like. If you have a fitted sheet and it has an L-shaped rip like this, your sheet's pretty much toast. It's almost impossible to sew. So I'm gonna put it on this embroidery, whatever hoop this is. I always keep a couple of embroidery hoops around because they're real handy. See, with the, when you're darning a sock, you want it on, say, a light bulb shape because it's curved. This is flat, so we want to keep this as flat as possible. Okay. I have a king-size bed. And as anybody knows, king-size beds are a real pain in the butt and expensive to buy sheets for. So when a, fit, a perfectly good fitted sheet gets ripped by my dog, we want to try and repair it. But you don't want to put a patch. You don't want to put a patch on your bottom sheet because your toenails or whatever are going to catch it and it's going to rip and it's going to be annoying. So the closest thing we can do to making it new again is to darn it. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm just going to take one of these safety pins and I'm going to grab that corner and I'm going to pin it through to the corner on the other side and I have grabbed it deep into the fabric because if you get too close to the edge it'll just pull through okay now you want a really long sewing needle not a darning needle but you can buy fabric darning needles which are, are like this and they're quite long and they're slender because we're darning fabric we are not darning wool so it's a whole other ball game now I'm going to bring my hand up underneath and I am doubling the, the thread but I'm not knotting on the end. Why do you not want to knot on the end? Because it'll catch on your skin when you sleep and it'll tear and it's a pain in the butt. Okay, so now my hand is under here and all I'm going to do, now if you really want to be sure, you can darn the entire square, but it's totally not necessary. But we are going to go back and forth across and then across this way of our cut or our tear and we're going to go to an inch on either side of the of the tear as well as at the very end and we are just going to weave this in and out kind of like if I was quilting only larger stitches and we're going to pull now I thought about using a different colored thread so that you could see it better but I do have to live with these sheets weave in and out and go right over maybe even catch some of these threads and may want to catch try and catch some of these threads that are loose and then all the way to a good inch to the other side of the tear we're going to leave a good couple of inches of thread here okay to trim later on and then we're going to go back through we're going to move it over and then again, we're going to begin to weave. And weave, if you can, in the opposite direction of the stitches previous that you put through, because it sets a pattern. So wherever there's a gap in your stitches from the row before, pick that up. Okay, so when I have all of this sewn across, we'll be back. Okay, now we're at the corner and I'm gonna leave this safety pin in here. It's gotta hold in place or we're gonna have a crooked darn. What I'm gonna do here is you notice I've gone straight, but I'm gonna take my corner here and you've got, see my thumb under there? I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna weave straight up to the corner. Why? Because it's the weakest spot in the tear and I just want to anchor it 
in place. I probably could have done that at the beginning instead of using a safety pin. And then back underneath a corner here. And let's get that tugged up, just like that. And this is where I'm gonna end this thread because it's short and I need to. I'm gonna give it a little extra stitch. And make sure that your tension is the same all the way along or you're gonna have lumps and loops. Okay, now that I've done up here to the corner, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start back over here at the other end of the tear, just the way we did at the beginning. We're gonna start in the fabric before the cut. Because if you start on the cut, that cut can continue to go. You want to reinforce the fabric where the tear, where the tear ends so that it doesn't re-tear. So we just weave our thread in and out, really supporting the, the ends and the corner. The ends and the corner. This was a much bigger tear. I would probably darn farther back from the tear but this is a small one so it doesn't need as much of the tensile support of the thread as a bigger tear would in this disposable society people don't, have not been taught enough about how to repair things rather than you know, turn them into something else. Yes, I could turn this into something else, but with such a small tear, it's very easily repaired. Well, not easily. It takes some time and some patience, but it's not a difficult repair if you take your time, you show some patience, and you can repair your sheet almost as good as new. Now, I'm almost there at the corner. Remember I did that heavy reinforced stitch right there? And I'm going to go right to it and I'm going to start weaving the thread that I wove across. And I'm going to start on the outside of that tear and I'm going to reweave all down, strengthening the threads that went across. And then we're going to go back across this way. And you don't have to go right up next to the stitches on the outside because you've already reinforced them. So we just, you know, we just want to anchor them. Okay, so now this is where it gets a little fussy because we still have a hole there. We want to make sure that we go opposite of the way we just came up. So we're gonna weave over and under and over and under opposite of the over and under we did before. You see how we're, I guess you can't see. Let's see if I can get this up close. See how we're building fabric now. And all I'm going to do with this is now do a cross stitch. Normally I wouldn't do this, but this is a really big hole. So I'm, I'm weaving a bias kind of a thread through on an angle to kind of put it, some more meat into this hole, especially up near the corner. Okay, now we'll trim this off. What I'm going to do now is once again, I'm going to go across the weaving here, remember how we did this cut? We did it this way. I'm gonna go back and forth across here, and then I'm gonna go back and forth across here again, and once more up, and that should really solidify our darning. And don't get excited. Make sure you still are getting all the odd threads that are of the original fabric. And you know how I know I'm done, folks? When I can press up on that, and not see my hand. That is a good repair. In about 40 minutes, I've woven a new patch into a ripped sheet, which would have eventually just ripped more and more and more. Now, just to make sure this corner is good, 
and secure, I'm actually going up on an angle just to be sure. And there it is, folks. And this is really up close. We have woven in a good, strong patch into our sheet. And you can barely see where the tear was. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying 40 minutes, some thread and a needle, and I just saved a sheet that would probably cost me $40 to replace because I'd have to buy a new set. Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Take care, God bless.